Next, on Vox Africa, Anna Michael brings you unique showcases on Nigeria. Well, quite a lovely morning back here in the nation's capital, Abuja, Nigeria. As I have here on the show with me, the special advisor to the Mohammed Buhari administration, of course. That's the uh, one and only Mr. Femi Adishino. <laughs> well, it's going to be a fantastic, fantastic morning. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back shortly. Thank you for being on the show with us all the way to the nation's capital. I'm in the office of Mr. Femi Adeshina, the special advisor to President Mohamed Buhari. We are going to be having a chat on some major issues. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, sir. The last time we discussed, you know, we were talking about uh, you know, the state of the fight against Boko Haram and the Chibok girls. And then we were talking about how they could not launch you know, major um, you know, uh, campaigns anymore. But now we can celebrate the release of some of these girls. I I personally would have thought that would not be possible. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't believe they would come back. No, no I just twenty three are it. back. Many more will still come. Mm -hmm. So the lesson is never say never. Wow. As long as we have life, never say never. Wow. Anything can happen. Yes, um, it, it was a process of negotiation between the security agencies in the country, spearheaded largely by ESS, okay. and then supported by other security agencies, and there was a negotiation process, and those 23 were released. And uh, I can say um, there is more where that came from. Oh, wow. <laughs> you to see more releases, uh, you know, we, anytime we, soon. We are trusting. Don't forget that President Buhari has said whatever it takes to get the girls back, he will do whatever it takes. He will negotiate, he will talk, he, he, if it meant pain, he will pay. He said whatever it took, he will, he will want to get the girls reunited with their families. That's really great. Our prayers are with the family. Now, um, you know, the girls have been released. Is there a program in place to integrate them back into the society? Some form of, you know, even the parents, how to, you know, get them to feel, you know, because this is a big stigma. I mean, among their peers, in school, at work, at home, you know, is there a program in place to... Yes, you said, is there a program in place? I would say that it's not just that there's a program in place, there's a program in process. Okay. Already it has started. Okay. A, 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 a sort of rehabilitation program. You know, okay. they need to be rehabilitated mentally, psychologically, physically, Com completely, yeah, completely. And that has been done now. Professionals and experts are working with them. They will be reintegrated, the education will be continued, and uh, they will be made to feel human once again. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's really sad what happened to our brave men. Uh, wow. The 12, yes. Yeah. And my heart goes out to their family mm -hmm. and their children. Yeah. You know, is, is there a program um, in place for people like that? How are the families going to be taken care of, their children, you know? I was really, really um, happy because for the first time, I felt a celebration. You know, usually I have never experienced a situation where we really know this happened and we really see them as brief. You just hear, it's like a news box. There was a send off, there was a proper ceremony. They are heroes of our country, of this yeah. nation. Yeah. And um, are their families, you know, what's the plan for their families? No, the, the, the services actually have that inbuilt into uh, conditions and rules of uh, engagement. Okay. When you, you go to serve, either in the army or the navy or the air force, you already have those things built into um, the, 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 the rules book, so to speak. Okay. So. Those who have lost their lives in the service of the country, ah, the, 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 their relations are going to be well taken care of. Mm -hmm. And you, you also find beyond what the book says, you find people coming in to help. Lieutenant Colonel Ali Abu died recently. You have had many governors, I know of Cardinal, I know of Bondo, coming to help the family. So I'm, I'm sure that all those who die in service to the country, who have laid down their lives, will have their families taken care of. 
Thank you for that. Now, I recently had an interview with a Nigerian born, you know, billionaire industrialist. I'm talking about Chief Eric Odinaka Mafia, and he was lamenting about how he feels, you know, the manufacturing, uh, you know, industry in Nigeria is not as well supported as they should be. He wants to close shop and leave. He wants to go back to Angola. You know, he's been here, he brought his money and he feels that he's still competing with products that have been imported. I'm talking about the Tomato King. And I feel like, is that, should, should that be happening? Is there something that the, you know, the administration can do to uh, further maybe boost the manufacturing industry? Or is there a, a loss <laughs> in, or is there a loss of communication somewhere there? Yes, I, I, I know that uh, the emphasis of this government is on agriculture, on solid minerals, and on manufacturing. You will say that with manufacturing, yes, it needs a lot more money. And when you talk of this money, we're talking of hard currency. And this is at a time when we are not earning much in terms of hard currency. I'll tell you that as late as uh, November, as recent as November 2014, Nigeria State earned an average of 3.2 to 3.5 billion dollars a month. A month? A month. 3.2 to 3.5 billion dollars a month as of November 2014. Only for it to crash by the middle of 2015 to around 500 million dollars a month. You can see the white gap wow. between 3.2, 3.5, and 500 million. Because the price of oil was about $100 per barrel, even going up to $120 per barrel. Then that same price crashed to $32 per barrel. So it affected the earnings of the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, like the president will say, oil prices crashed, and we simply crashed with it. <laughs> <laughs> so that is it. Until oil prices rise again, a lot of things may not be, be, be possible, or the time for such things may be longer. That's what we'll say. So, for people like Chief Umofia, I'll just say he needs to just be patient and allow the retooling and the engineering that the government is doing with the economy okay. to, to bear fruits. Mm -hmm. and then he took a ring from the dividends. Oh, okay. I know it can be tough. <laughs> can be tough. And the unemployment rate is at an all time high. Yeah. I don't know what's going on, but you know, everybody keeps blaming this on an economic blueprint. We don't really have an economic blueprint. We don't know what this federal administration is doing. That is what they keep saying, you know. So, um. Well, yeah. let, 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 let me respond to that because it's okay. not quite true. At least two different times the economic blueprint had been clearly enunciated. One was when budget 2016 was presented to the National Assembly. The president read a speech in which he clearly enunciated the direction of the economy. We want to curb importation, Nigerians will reduce their taste, we want to focus on infrastructure development, we, we, we want to focus on our Greek, our solid minerals and manufacturing. All these were clearly enunciated. Mm -hmm. And again in May 2016, there was a strategic implementation plan, which also unfolded the direction of the economy. So nobody can, can say that there is no economic blueprint. There is an economic blueprint if they do not know. It will not be the fault of the administration because the administration unfolded it. In another couple of days, budget 2017 will also be taken to the National Assembly. The economic direction will also be given during that, that day. Okay, now we're talking about 2017, but let's talk about the 2016 yes. 6 billion. Yes. Everyone is wondering, I mean, was that funded? You know, what is going on? Because, you know... Okay, I, I, I'll, I'll give you information on that. That budget was signed in May this year. It was delayed because there were issues. Okay. okay. But eventually it got signed into law and implementation started. As we speak, in five months alone, 750 billion has been released for infrastructure. 
in five months alone. That's greater than even budget for 2014. In 2013, you know how much was spent on infrastructure? 19 billion. And now, in five months, 20, the 750 billion has been released for infrastructure. So that shows you the extent, the way the budget is funded. When you fund infrastructure that way, it unlocks the economy. It stimulates the economy. And that is the intention. The, company, the economy is in a recession, but when you spend heavily like that, the recession will just be, uh, a, 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 it will last for a short while. And but you know, some people think that the funding or the stimulation is not at uh, maybe the level it should be for a country in recession. People are saying there is a lot. You, well, like the do, you, me, how do you get the money? No, let me explain. For instance, now, the TSA is, is, they believe the TSA is a fantastic idea. You know, the mop-up is incredible. We have been wasteful. Yeah. So they expect the mop-up. But then they are thinking there is so much money sitting down, not going on any assignment, yeah. that should be stimulating the economy. Yeah. They believe we are not stimulating in as much as we should be. And the country is in recession. The money in TSA does not belong to government to spend. The money sent from TSA is money meant for MDAs, ministries, departments, and agencies. They are there, and they are the ones to use it. It's not that government uh, will put it in budget again. So we need to get that clear. That the money is there, is for the departments and agencies to use, but they must bring clear, oh, okay. clear a plan to use, yeah, to use that money. If there was no TSA, TSA is over $4 trillion now. Wow, but that money will simply have melted. It will simply have melted away. Nobody will. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have over four trillion. Yes, four trillion naira in TSA. That's what we have. Why? Know. Why can't he be doing something? It's it's, it's there. It's there. It's there to use. It's there to use. It's just that you cannot be wanton with it. You cannot waste it. You cannot be misappropriated because you have to justify your need for it. And then, talking about funding the budget, I told you 750 billion on infrastructure alone, oh. not to talk about other parts of the budget. And then don't forget that after the budget was signed, this insurgency in the Niger Delta reared its head again. It was not factored in when the budget was prepared. So, some two, three months after that budget was prepared, the, the budget was performing at about 40-45% because income dropped drastically. We, the budget was predicated on 2.2 million barrels of oil per day. The insurgency dropped the, 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 the number of barrels to as low as 1 million per day. We were losing wow. close to 1 on 2 million barrels of oil per day. So it affected income and it affected the budget drastically. But despite that, the government is still, is still doing the best it can do wow. despite the insurgency. Okay, now let's talk about the economy diversification. You know, yeah. we know that this administration has been talking about, you know, solid minerals, they are talking about um, Agree. agriculture, yes. tourism, manufacturing. manufacturing. Yes. And, um, you know, one of, maybe because I come from a bit of a background of, you know, tourism, business tourism, leisure tourism, and I'm thinking, okay, so what's happening? I mean, Abuja, even the Abuja Carnival, you know, that we have been experiencing for years uh, in, 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 the, um, in the past. We didn't see it last year. We don't know if it's happening this year. You know, we expect that with some of these things, we should be seeing that excitement and, and a bit of um, an aggression in some of these industries that we know we are diversifying into. So do you think that uh, that makes us feel like, okay, really the, this admission is taking, maybe like tourism as serious as they should, are they taking? Well, um, let me not be pontifical, uh, okay. because tourism specifically has a minister in charge of it. You have the okay. Minister of Information and Culture who also oversees tourism. Okay. He can give you specific answers. Okay. But what I'll tell you is that yes, Tourism is one of the areas the country is looking towards to, to also boost its economy. But don't forget that there are certain things you need to get right 
for tourism to thrive. Mm -hmm. One particularly is security. Mm -hmm. And that is something this That's government major has right focused now. on. So, the, like the president keeps saying, you can't administer a country you have not secured. And that is why he has placed uh, so much premium on securing the country. His work in progress, his work that has gone very far, and this work that will be accomplished. And you you know that when that uh, is fully accomplished, it will also boost tourism. So mm -hmm. tourism is one of the areas the government is going to focus on. But for more information on that, I'll uh, rather you talk to the minister in charge of that sector. Oh, okay. Well, um, thank you so much. We are going to go on a short break right now. And when we, when we get back, we're going to still continue the discussion with the special advisor to the president on the media and publicity, Mr. Femi Adishima. Thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome back to the 411 on Vox Africa. I'm Anu Michael and I'm presently here in the office of the Special Advisor to the President. I'm talking about Nigerian President, of course, Mr. Femi Adeshima. Thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome back, sir. Now, let's talk about, you know, um, what is the current state of the fight against Boko Haram? That has gone very, very far. Very, very far. Don't forget that the military had a target to end that insurgency by December of 2015. Yes. And that was largely accomplished. You had a situation in which that insurgent groups had been thoroughly degraded. In fact, if you want me to use a graphic illustration, it's like a man whose back had been broken. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when the bag is broken, there is a limit to what the person can do. So, Boko Haram had got to that position. But then, in warfare, the mopping up process is as vital as the actual fighting process. So, we are in a mopping up process now. It's like a horse, a, a dying horse that gives a kick. You know the kick? can be as deadly hmm. as when the horse was alive. That is what is happening with Boko Haram. Okay. Now, because they have been badly decimated, they sneak into villages and into towns occasionally to do a bombing. They bomb motor parks, they bomb uh, mosques, they bomb some schools. Even the capacity for that has been seriously, seriously reduced. Hmm you find the security uh, agencies picking them up hmm. as they want to Just enter, yes, places they want to go and do bombing. So uh, I think that is one war that has been likely one. It's been likely one. The mopping up will continue. Don't forget that at a point, particularly at the point this government came into power, Boko Haram was in northeast. They were in North Central, they were in North West, they were in Abuja, the seat of the federal capital. And the, the security forces began to beat them, beat them till they send them out of North Central, send them out of Abuja, send them out of North West, send them out of major areas of the North East. And they be, became circumscribed in the Sambisa forest. Mm -hmm. As we talk now, they are being routed in that forest. So, okay. very soon, very soon, we will see a conclusive end. Now, let's talk about, um, you know, corporate organizations. We know that companies and businesses are set up to be profit-oriented, but in a situation in the country where we have corporate giants, you know, declaring billions of Naira in profits, and these same companies, in maybe a month or two after, are sacking thousands and thousands of their staff I don't understand how the, you know, the policy within the country does not, we don't have a policy in place to ensure that people's jobs are secure and that to maximize, because, you know, we are in a recession. I don't believe that private organizations or even investors should be allowed to do this within the economy. Is there a way the presidency can cop this? Because some school of thoughts keep arguing, you know, and discussing this issue. You have a bank or an oil and gas company, we know their dividend, we know what they declared, and then just four months, they are sacking thousands. 
2000s, 3000s. How is that possible? I, I would recommend that you speak to Dr. Chris Ndige, who is the Minister of Labour and Employment. Okay. Because I know he's doing something about it. Oh, okay. There was a time he needed to engage with the Association of uh, Industrial Unions in the banks okay. so that uh, banks would not just sack people wantonly. We are not saying that if you are productive, you can be sacked, mm -hmm. of course, mm -hmm. but then there will, there will not be just mass mm -hmm. sack like that. Mm -hmm. I think the, 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 the Minister of Labor is. Is, okay. Uh, doing a lot about. I that. look forward really to discussing with you. <laughs> Do you think that we are supportive of as we should be Nigerians? Are we patriotic? Are we supportive of this worried administration? Do you think we are impatient? Are we not understanding enough? You know, because sometimes when the parent says, "I will give you this," and it's not coming, and then you're murmuring, you're complaining. Is that what we're doing? Do you think we are supporting enough? Yes, I I believe that there is a vast majority that is very supportive. Though things are hard, they are willing to be patient. Vast, vast, vast majority. I told you about the vocal minority earlier on. It's the vocal minority that is making all the noise, that makes it seem as if things are very, very bad in the country and nothing positive is happening. The vast number that supports is there quietly waiting and hoping and praying along with the, with the government. What I would just like to say is that that tiny minority that is so vocal should remember that this is our country. We don't have any other. What you say of the country is what uh, those in the international arena will hear. Yeah, that, that, that's how they will see the country. So they can be a lot more patriotic. You know, President Mohamed Buhari, because I, I was not of age when he ruled. And most of us that, that, yes, that say the same Buhari is from what our parents told us. It's from what we have heard of who he is. So when it comes to integrity, a lot of people have no doubt about his capacity and his transparency. And, but when let's talk about his cabinet. You know, 18 months now on, should there be, okay, almost 18 months. Oh. Yes, 18 months of government, but the cabinet is just 12 months. Okay, okay. so is there going to be a reshuffling? Should we expect a reshuffling anytime soon? Maybe to stimulate, you know, the economy somehow? Yes. Um, a different perspective? Of course, cabinets are liable to be reshuffled. Okay. But then, that decision is left to the person that has assembled that cabinet. <laughs> because when he assembled that cabinet, there must have been timelines and deliverables he gave each minister. Mm -hmm. And he is the one that can assess them based on those timelines and deliverables. Mm -hmm. I'm sure 12 months down the line, the president must have been looking at each minister, how he has performed. And when it comes to a time that he can either rejig or reshuffle, he's at liberty mm -hmm. to do that because he assembled it in the first place. I have been having this chat with Mr. Femi Adeshino, the special advisor to President Mohamed Buhari, that's the Buhari administration. This is the nation's capital, FCT Abuja, and I am Anu Michael, your host on the 411. Until next time, stay beautiful and have a lovely week.